What is up, Collider TV Talk fans? My name is David Griffin. We are here sans Makuga. Makuga is out on his pre-marriage victory lap right now in uh, <laughs> down south somewhere. I'm not sure what he's doing. Hopefully he's keeping it safe. Uh, we missed you, Makuga. So that, that means we can talk about everything that Makuga hates. We have robots, British television. We have books. Just everything that Makuga doesn't like. Probably some animation stuff we're going to talk about. It's going to be a fun show. Got to mention right at the top, folks, if you like Collider TV Talk, if you like Collider videos in general, don't forget on August 29th at 7.30 p.m. at the Arclight Hollywood. That's the big dome theater, the famous theater in Los Angeles. You can come meet the Collider crew. We're going to be watching uh, Jurassic Park, doing a screening, and then a live Q&A with some of your favorite Collider video people. Maybe some people at this very table will be there. Now, let's see who is at this table. First, I am joined by the lovely, just just gorgeous, fantastic <laughs> MMMMMation. <laughs> Emma Whoa! Five herself Nailed is it. with us Nailed today. It. Thanks for that lovely introduction, David. I also love for you, like, we might talk about cartoons when there's blatantly cartoons right behind you on the screen. <laughs> yes. Spider Man is behind me. I forgot about that. <laughs> We're talking about Spider Man today. And also, too, I am joined by the woman who is kissed by fire herself. As Torben says, gingers are beautiful. Well, I have one of them right next to me, Mrs. Grace Hancock. Oh, hello. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Collider TV Talk on a saucy Thursday. Uh, we have a really great show today. We're going to be eating peanut butter and talking mm -hmm. about crazy stuff because dad's out of town. And we right. Can do whatever we want. like peanuts. He can't <laughs> handle peanuts. He yep. gets sick. And right. he's allergic to pine nuts? He's allergic or to yeah. everything. He's allergic, he's allergic to, to every yeah. nut, he's, he's everything delicious guy. in the world. He can yeah. literally eat like grapes. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm not even sure about that. He may not be able to have <laughs> grapes. So, Grace, we got a little bit of, uh, let's call it breaking news, kind of a big story uh, developed late last <laughs> night about some casting information here. Yes. Yeah, so, we found out today that Anna Diop has landed the series regular role of Starfire in Titans. Titans is following a group of young, soon-to-be superheroes recruited from different corners of the DC universe, and it's going to premiere next year as part of the new DC-branded digital mm -hmm. service, which is exciting. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched a little bit of her uh, 24 Legacy. Mm -hmm. I thought she was, she was good. You know, I'm excited to see this because I think DC... The, you know, the animated, you know, universe is doing a great job. This is the uh, Teen Titans. I Judas love the contract. prop you got. Just yes. like, yeah, I, like, prop. like I went, I, I, I went by my, my little Blu-ray collection. I'm like, let me just take this <laughs> and take it to a little prop. So a little show and tell today. So I'm excited to see Titans, you know, doing a live action format. This could be fun. Yeah, the Teen Titans animated series I loved. Mm -hmm. So I I mean, obviously, this is the this is not Teen Titans. Yeah, because uh, this is Titan, like mid-30s Titans. Mid -30s sure, Titans. I'm, I'm, Titans. Say, I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah. Anna Diop is my age, maybe a little older mm -hmm. than I am. Yeah, so, she's 29, I think. Okay, yeah, so we're, we're about the same age. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, so anyway. But I, I am curious to mm -hmm. see uh, a live action Titans because that's a property with which I am most familiar in an animated format. And, you know... As you say, David, like DC kills it with the animated series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Overall, I would yeah. say that, that DC's track record in terms of animation is stronger right. than Marvel's. Mm -hmm. And I feel that Marvel's live action track record, especially with things like the Netflix series, is perhaps a little bit stronger than DC's. Again, that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't like the CW shows, but I feel like Daredevil's got a little bit more going on in it than The Flash does. Right, yeah. right, right. But again, I I'm very curious to see now that they are doing this digital streaming service if maybe they will be able to push the envelope mm -hmm. a little bit and do some really interesting stories and I, I think that the characters that are in the Teen Titans lore are fun and interesting so I'm I'm definitely excited about this it's funny this news broke while I was streaming Dream Daddy over at Hyper yesterday mm -hmm. and the whole chat started talking about it and everyone was like Man, they just get rid of all the gingers in the DC universe. And that Never. Da, but listen, guys, we don't know. She could be ginger, okay? Black ladies, yeah. they do some crazy great stuff with their hair. So yeah. I am excited to see what happens. Mm -hmm. with she the, can the be the a ginger for sure. Yeah. I welcome her into the into the what are we, Kissed by Fire Club? You're by kissed fire. by fire like the clone club, but better. Like the clone club. And speaking of kissed by fires, as Tormund <laughs> just said so wonderfully, oh my God, this gingers are the best. Speaking it. of kissed by fire. Grace, what is our next story? Okay, so yesterday HBO released the images from this Sunday's upcoming finale where we will, uh, we at least know for sure that John and Cersei are going to be meeting, Tyrion is going to be reuniting with his incestuous and possibly pregnant siblings, and Bran will continue to brood in his wheelchair. <laughs> what are you guys most excited for? Emma, what, what, what pick sticks mm -hmm. out for you? I mean, what photo do you like? Um, this? Cersei and Jamie, I think yeah, they're right behind me. Yeah, they look uh, great. Uh, I mean, Cersei's dude, outfit looks fantastic. Cersei's outfit is the, on mm -hmm. point. I literally, all I 
talk about watching this show is the costumes. I'm so annoying, but they are epic, and I feel mm -hmm. like they're such unsung heroes working on this show. Like, I can't handle it, but continue. Absolutely. And, and on top of that, Cersei is one of my favorite characters in a she's such a great villain mm -hmm. kind of way. And in the books, she's one of my favorite POV characters because she's totally crazy, but you get why she's totally crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because she is so ruthless on some level, you're kind of rooting for her. Oh, I'm openly rooting this, for her. This world is brutal and mm -hmm. she has, dude, she is a fighter. She is a survivor. She has yeah. hung on. She's outlived all of her children. So I, yeah. I cannot wait to see her meet the only character on the series who's kind of quintessentially good being mm -hmm. Jon Snow. Like that is a confrontation that I am here for. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm curious to see because we didn't see on, all right, so we know last episode, they were on the boat. Yeah, Daenerys and John on the boat. Yeah, so they're together. But the one thing we don't see in these photos, and we didn't see in the preview next week, is in this big council meeting, you don't see Daenerys. Now, it does, there, there's a lot of chairs set up in that council. I think it's going to be a big reveal. show up, but we haven't seen Daenerys there. So I wonder what her entrance is going to be like. Is she going to ride in? On one of the dragons and this kind of like land nearby. Yeah, and get I mean, off I hope like, she just what? like kicks what? the door down so, yeah. and like burns it down yeah. and is like, "What's up?" I mean, like, there's no cars in this time period, so it's like her. <laughs> it's like her showing up like in a Rolls Royce, being like, "What? <laughs> I got the drop top. I'm cruising." She's like, "Where's the valet for my Bugatti? Right, yeah, like, right, get out of here!" Exactly. So I'm pretty excited about seeing this. Brand. Brand is kind of the wild card. What's Brand gonna do? He's all knowing, He's all seeing. Stare at a wall. Stare and at the brood fire the whole time. Sad. Like, yeah. But, I mean, he's, I, but he's so damn cozy with all the, that fur. It's cold, that cold that up there. It's cold it's in It's a North. cozy yeah. wheelchair. Yeah. Like, I he's get gonna it. Be he's warm like and the, the three eyed raven now. He's not really Bran anymore. Mm. But I mean, like, maybe he'll get some tact in this episode and not be like, <laughs> man, Sansa, you looked real pretty the night you were raped. Mm. Uh. <laughs> Shit. Awkward, awkward brother sister talk. Yeah. Awkward brother sister. Yeah. I know, talk. and nobody ever like calls him out either. Nobody's ever like, well, that's weird. Yeah. What are you talking about? Everyone's just always like. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's it. Like, nobody has any questions. I'm like, uh, Bran, what the hell? So, yeah. speaking anyway, of awkward so. sexual things, <laughs> imagine, <laughs> yeah, speaking of awkward oh. sexual things, imagine if, imagine if, when you're going through the, the stage, you're going through puberty, they manifested the themselves as monsters and they could talk to you at night. Grace, what is our next story? All right, so Netflix has released two teaser clips from the upcoming series called Big Mouth. It's gonna be a 10 episode, half hour adult animated comedy that's gonna tackle the taboo topics of adolescence, puberty, and sexuality. Um, I mean, like everything else on TV, it seems like this has the most insanely talented and diverse cast. Mm -hmm. uh, we both, we all watched the, the two teaser clips. I really liked the one with the teenage girl because I could totally relate because I was a total rebellious asshole mm -hmm. in my teenagehood. Um, the other one was a little much for me, but what did you guys think? All right, see, this is when the, how much do you reveal? Okay, so the boy scene was a little weird. So to give you a little stuff, if you haven't oh seen God. the clip, the boy is basically looking at this cat clock and he's getting like his, his you know, hormone manifestations, this monster is trying to talk him into basically masturbating, you know. But he's had a sleepover. He's like had a his sleepover friend and his next friends to him. nearby. So my first time was not like that. It was not looking at a cat <laughs> clock. So I won't reveal any more than that, but that was a little bit weird. I don't really understand that, but it was hilarious, though. I was still cracking up. It's awkward. This whole talk about going through puberty, going through stages, is awkward. And it's funny, though, because that's why when you're a kid, you ever take health class? Mm -hmm. My teacher would be like, okay, guys, it's giggle time. And you'd kind of like giggle and laugh and <laughs> yeah. do all those stupid stuff. This is that, but on an adult level. This is very adult. This is not for kids, yeah. but I was yeah. cracking up. I, I did was really like it the, was funny. the uh, hormone monstrous in the I, girl so clip great. because. There, because she was weirdly kind of sexy. Like, is that mm. is that weird to say? Oh, interesting, yeah. But that was the idea was that was that she was kind of it was this girl who was struggling with embracing female sexuality. I mean, she mm. had a baseball glove and she was kind of a tomboy. Right. She's like, I love my mom. I don't want to. She's get like, in a no, fight you want to make her cry and then laugh exactly, at her tears. Exactly, and I was exactly. like, that was me. Yeah. Sorry, mom. Yeah. So it, it was funny that the sort of route that they went with her was kind of like tempting the girl right. into stuff she didn't want to do. But yeah, it seems like it's going to be very like, you know, kind of a la like family guy adult and it looks like it might, it might, I don't know if this will be like don't miss TV mm -hmm. for me, but I'm excited it's to funny, check it out. All, all yeah. these like, you know, guys in their 30s and 40s like reminiscing on what it was like 
guys and girls going through that time period where your hormones are going crazy and just talk about that in a funny way, I think it could be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. For Absolutely. Sure. And Netflix has a good track record with mm -hmm. animated series that are for adults. There yeah. was a new BoJack Horseman trailer that dropped this morning, and I mean, that show is just great, you guys. Yeah. If you're not watching it, you really should. Especially if you live in L.A. and have done comedy at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, boy, it's really real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so Big Mouth mm -hmm. is going to be premiering um, on Netflix this September 29th, so check it out. Let us know what you guys think. Um, also, yesterday, uh, I'm going to move us right along. NBC mm -hmm. released the first season Season two clip for everyone's favorite show. No, you're crying. I mean, this is us. <laughs> um, we were kind of chatting about this. I mean, this definitely looks like this season two is going to be sticking pretty faithfully to kind of the same vibe of season one mm -hmm. with more stuff happening. What did you guys think? I mean, did you get emotional? Well, so I know uh, of uh, the table here. I think I'm the only one who's actually watched the whole first season. Yeah, I'm yeah, not. not. So I mean, it's it. classic. This is us, classic parenthood style. I mean, it's got the the like slow guitar, like, yeah, the, like the acoustic, and, I'm like, and then like uh, like, like, the, the, well like the very like emotional talk between you know an adopted son and his mom, and like of course flashing back to the the scene in the uh, Pittsburgh hospital uh, right. with her deciding whether or not because she lost one of the, they're having triplets. Right, you know, that's the story, and 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 they lost one of the triplets. Right, and the dad was like, you know, this this kid was he was placed right before us. We should take him. Someone left him at a fire station. Let's take him. Let's bring him into our family. And Mandy Moore just lost a baby. She's tired. She's got. Yeah. done going through pregnancy oh giving birth to two babies and she doesn't want to deal with that right now and he's convincing her and they're basically having this discussion like you think your parents are on this pedestal like they love you unconditionally and you, and you believe that and they do but there's always more to it than that and there's right. always the, the kind of the darker side of things they're and, human and too. he's trying to ask Mandy Moore her character his mom about that time that's a tough conversation of course I, I mean, I got teary eyed just watching the scene. I can't, no, I know. Are, are you two going to think you might try to catch up with yeah, it? Maybe? I, I, yeah, because we've watched the first several episodes. Exactly. Right? And we I just haven't finished the mm -hmm. season. Exactly. Okay, yeah. I enjoy what I've seen of it. I loved Parenthood. It's a lot of the same team that's behind it. So yeah. my plan is to catch up fast because season two is it's coming up it's, <laughs> yeah, it's no, no I, pressure I'm, guys no pressure my, my, my dvr is already preheating it's already like starting to smoke right now it's just in preparation <laughs> for what's coming uh, you should probably run home because your house is yeah, on fire, on fire yeah. but yeah adore sterling k brown yeah. so yeah we were talking about that mm -hmm. he's so talented and i'm i'm thrilled to be checking out season two um on uh, september 26th on nbc um go. and now we're gonna go to our very own allison keen with performer of the week Hey everybody, I'm Collider.com TV editor Allison Keene here with the latest edition of TV Performer of the Week. I've wanted to talk about Animal Kingdom on TNT for a while now because it's gotten so good in its second season. But it's been a tough one to pick a performer from because it's such a great ensemble drama. If you haven't been watching, and you definitely should be, the series is based off an Australian film of the same name and it follows the Cody family who are led by a tough matriarch. They're all criminals, mostly stealing from banks and leading other heists, and there are a lot of complicated dynamics among the family that the TV show really has the space to get into. But my choice for TV Performer of the Week is Ellen Barkin, who plays that matriarch on the show Janine, who goes by Smurf. Even her sons call her Smurf. That's just who she is. But this season, the boys have started to turn on her, wanting to plan and execute their own heists without her influence, especially after one of them discovers she's been skimming off of their jobs and holding back money from them. So that brings us to this week's episode, where we see Smurf in jail. I think one of the most fascinating things about Smurf and the way Barkin plays her is how she's so cold and manipulative, yet truly loving in other ways. But on the whole, Barkin is pretty terrifying as Smurf, and yet she also gives her so many layers that you're never really sure what to believe or whether she's telling the truth or even if you're on her side or should be. She can order a hit and then calmly turn around and bake a pie at home. She's orchestrating these massive heists and directing her sons to procure firearms and doesn't even blink at some of their drug habits. And then she'll be like, oh, I have a nice roast in the oven for dinner. She also has like a weird sexual tension with her sons, one of whom is adopted and her favorite by far. So there's just a lot going on. Smurf is both a hardened criminal and someone who is very protective of her family, and it's a really fascinating dynamic. If you're watching the show, then you know that next week's finale looks exceptionally explosive, and a lot of those tensions are finally coming to light and playing out. It really is one of the best shows of the summer, so that's my pick for TV Performer of the Week, Ellen Barkin on Animal Kingdom. Makuga, back to you. All right. Thank you, Allison Keene. We so appreciate you. We love it when we can <laughs> physically have you in the studio. But yeah, yeah. in the meantime, seeing your face on Thursdays brightens everybody's lives. Mm -hmm. You know what else brightens everybody's lives? Talking about <laughs> things that Josh McCuga hates. So we are going to dive <laughs> right yes. into a review of a new animated series, because you know how much Josh McCuga loves animated series. 
This weekend on Disney XD, the new Spider-Man series premiered, and I have to say, it's really cute. Mm -hmm. I am uh, very good friends with Robbie Damon, who is the voice of Peter Parker slash Spider-Man, and also with Max Middleman, who is the voice of uh, Harry Osborn. So I wanted to throw the show a little bit of love, and because I've known about this project for a long time, and they were not able to say anything about it until this year at San Diego Comic-Con. Mm -hmm. wow, that was the yeah. first time they were able to talk about it, and wow. they recorded the voices for this probably two years ago. That's mm -hmm. how long the turnover process is in sort of traditional Western style animation where you do cast records ahead of time and everything gets animated mm -hmm. later. So I liked it. What did you guys think? I thought it was fun. I mean, like Emma, we were talking before this. It's like, it's definitely made for kids. It is definitely made for like, kids. Because like, you know, we review Star Wars Rebels here. It has some more adult themes in it. Even DuckTales, I felt like, went a little Wee darker. Yeah, mm -hmm. the DuckTales went a little darker. This one's definitely for kids all the way. It was cute. It was enjoyable. Uh, I know, Grace, you get to watch the first episode. So I thought it was cool that they stuck with Vulture, since Vulture yeah, is in the yeah. Spider-Man Homecoming. So I thought that was a good first villain uh, for the first episode. Yeah, for sure. I mean, here's the thing. <clears throat> like, this was super, super cute, and I really did enjoy mm -hmm. this. Definitely made for kids. The thing is, for me, is that, like, I think that there's mediums that work for everybody. That's why some people love... TV and some people love video games, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, and, and animation, just because I am an actor, I am an artist, like, I'm so about like human interaction and eyes and things like that. Like, mm -hmm. animation just doesn't really bake my noodle, and I'm sorry <laughs> to say it. No. But this was super, actually, really, really precious. It was really sweet and fun to watch. It was a very, like, easy watch. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that you, you're right, David, about, as we were talking about beforehand, that Disney XD definitely has some stuff where they are making it with an awareness that there are adults watching the show. To me, this feels a little bit like uh, a great Transformers series that was very much aimed at even younger kids, which was called Transformers Rescue Bots. Mm -hmm. And Rescue Bots was a really, really cute show. Definitely for children, but had good lessons in it and was mm -hmm. aware that... You know, parents are watching these shows with their kids, so it's not completely unpalatable for adults, but mm. it certainly isn't made specifically with the adult audience in mind, because I think with DuckTales, that was made to appeal to adults, right. to its built-in fan base yeah, of that are now who are around older. the age of 30, yeah. Yeah. who mm -hmm. now maybe do have kids that are watching it. Mm -hmm. But you know, most, I would say with this this generation, the, the pseudo-millennials, if you will, <laughs> most of us around 30 don't already have kids. Yes. So they really <laughs> did make DuckTales for yeah. us. Mm -hmm. And if they, again, so happen to have children, kids will also like it because it is animated, but it's, it, the, it's very much has an adult sense of humor. Not in an inappropriate sort of way, but in an intelligent kind of mm -hmm. way. And I felt that that wasn't necessarily the case with this new Spider-Man series. I really like the relationship between uh, uh, Peter mm -hmm. and Harry. I think it, they, it's really cute that they're just very much having a friendship. Because, I mean, they, they've been... They're, they're mostly friends in the mm -hmm. comics, but but off and on, sometimes right, right, enemies. Right. And I, I really like that it's like, Frenemies. no, man, we're, mm -hmm. like we support each other. But I, in the second episode, you see, because it was a one-hour premiere this weekend, mm -hmm. you see that Harry is... He though he and Peter are like, yeah, they're buddy. Yeah, yeah. he hates Spider Man. Yeah, he does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's no. cool. They have Miles Morales in there. Yeah. Miles Morales is another yeah. Spider Man. He's the the first. He's a half Puerto Rican, half African American. Yeah, so Roka cool. gave he's not me like yet. the crash course yeah. on Miles Morales well, that's cool yesterday. That Miles I was Morales like, is there. Yeah. Um, but we have to move on. But speaking of not family friendly shows, no. no. <laughs> so if the kids are watching. You're like, hey kids, watch TV talk. Let's let's move the kids away. Let's push them off. The <laughs> Don't push them. Just kind of gently, push, gently nudge them, nudge the them off to the side. <laughs> um, Grace, think we need to talk. Uh, um, yeah, we're gonna chat a little bit about Mr. Uh, Mercedes episode three that aired last mm -hmm. night. I have said this a lot, and I even tweeted it this morning. This is honestly one of my favorite new dramas. Um, mm -hmm. This I think is so well done. This show has more character development in three episodes than I have seen in some series ever, like yeah. that they ever achieve. Mm -hmm. And it is so refreshing to watch. The casting is so well done. The ensemble casting is. It's just mm -hmm. I have nothing. I have nothing bad to say about the show, except I'm a little. And spoiler alert: the incest thing is like a little much for me sometimes. Like again, I've said this about other shows. Mm -hmm. Some things can be left to the imagination. Like we've established that that's going on. I don't need to see it all the time. So that kind of stuff, I'm like, like a little squirmy. Yeah. But I think this is such a great show. What did you think? It's so good. I mean, Stephen King is right. He's he's blunt. I mean, he just kind of he's not yeah. a subtle writer. He just hammers it down to you. This kid is really good. I mean, uh, the Mr. Mercedes yeah. was in uh, Penny Dread. 
as Dr. Frankenstein. He's British, uh, you know, so of course he's he's great. No, um, <laughs> so of course David Blaine is really what that actor. means. No. Um, he's very good. And Brendan Gleeson, ooh, sorry, Mike move. Brendan Gleeson <laughs> is fantastic. Like, like I've said this before, I'm so glad they just kept him Irish. I'm sorry, folks. I know I called him Scottish. Look, when I first saw Brendan Gleeson, it, it, it was in Braveheart. That's the first time I ever saw that That's actor. That's fair. So that it was fair. in Braveheart. You got to forgive me. So when I saw him in Braveheart, I assumed <laughs> the dude's Scottish. All right, I wasn't. I was born in Virginia. I wasn't born in the UK. I apologize. So anyway, um, Emma, but I want to hear your take because we've talked about this for a couple of weeks now. Um, we've all been watching it. You, for the first time, watched the pilot. I did. Don't forget, this is David E. Kelly. Yeah. Big Little Lies, Ally McBeal. What did you think about this? You know, it's so <laughs> funny because Grace, you brought up the incest thing, and it was so, so uncomfortable. That And it starts off and it makes you care about all of these characters who are in line for this job fair, especially that one guy who was so nice to that lady who was there with her baby. He was so good and he was calling out everybody else on being jerks. And then immediately this guy in a clown mask and a Mercedes just plows through all of them and my heart was broken. And then poor Brendan Gleeson is retired Mm. and his life is terrible and he's overweight and he's drinking too much beer and just my heart was hurting and I felt like I didn't know if I liked it or not but the more I watched it the more I realized I did really like it and I went down this bender of like researching the novel and yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I really really enjoyed it It, it's incredibly well done Brendan Gleeson is just such a good actor he's yeah I mean uh, the the cast is so strong across the board, and mm. uh, the woman who plays his neighbor, yeah. Ida, yeah, I, I love Sarah her, yeah. Paulson's mm-hmm. partner, yeah, yeah I, she's so good. Mm-hmm. She's I, amazing. I just, it's it's incredibly well cast. I think that they do a very good job of skirting that line of too much. Mm-hmm. It, uh, yeah, it's a brutal show. It is. It's it's, it's totally brutal. brutal, but it's not unwatchable. They push right. it to the mm-hmm. point where you want to look away. And then it stops. And it helps too. That's just a mini series. Yeah, it's just yeah. going to be a one-off. You watch eight episodes, and then you're done. Then yeah, you're yeah. Out. It's then not you're this out. horrible. We'll be like, we'll be season be five, Mr. Mercedes. Right. Thankfully, because no, no. that'd be a little too much to right. watch. Right. And I'm really, I really liked the <clears throat> twist about how they had that now Brady is the one being manipulated mm-hmm. by Bill, and how he's like, well, we found him. Like, too bad again. Spoilers. Yeah. Sorry, 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 Emma. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it's okay. But I'm really excited to see. I'm like excited, but like nervous to see how he's going to react because he's obviously very mm-hmm. upset about this, and now he's kind of ghosting him. And I'm like, oh no. I love the relationship Brendan Gleeson has with the, his um, his caretaker, the guy, who, the kid who cuts the grass. I you know, know, that's a great kind of like mentor mentee like, relationship. Yeah. I hope nothing bad happens to him, but that's really good. <laughs> um, you know, we are a little bit ahead of schedule. We've been moving today, which is great. So Cooking. we actually have a little more time for some extra Twitter questions. Oh my gosh! Right? Well, yeah, we, have we a few are gonna. Questions. I I do have one, and this one um, <clears throat> is from our pal at Ethan Axel Andrew, and he wanted to know what are some of our favorite opening title sequences. Oh, of well. television shows. I mean, obviously Game of Thrones right. is like I mean, Game incredible. of Thrones is a gift. Simpsons yeah. is classic. The Simpsons is classic. Mm-hmm. I mean. I, I think that it's, for me, watching a lot of animation, they mm-hmm. actually tend to have some really dope opening The music sequences. is like, sure. like One Punch Man. One Punch Man. Yeah, the One Punch Man opening is amazing. Yeah, it's literally like Poppy. Yeah, and obviously Cowboy Bebop is a classic. So good with that Yoko Kano jazz music. So good. But I think that... Uh, live action, and and again, it, it, most title sequences are animated to some extent. But the I, I thought that the uh, Jessica Jones opening sequence mm-hmm. really did yeah, a good really job cool. of setting the tone mm-hmm. for that series. I loved the Defenders opening too. I think yeah. all the the Marvel Netflix openings have been quite strong. Yeah, the two that I was going to give a shout out to was Dexter. I thought the oh, opening of dang, Dexter was like super yeah. super. Dope. Oh yeah, with cutting the meat. Yeah, and the it's, all, it's, it's all like, like kind of like oh, brutal, yeah. but it's just oh, breakfast. Yeah. So good. Yeah. And then I was also going to throw out Westworld. Oh, because the opening of Westworld is just hey, insane. Hey, we're in a safe we space right now. Like yeah. We're in a safe. There's no Makuga. Makuga can't <laughs> jump out and be like, no Westworld, no Westworld. No world. The same ilk as Dexter. True Blood. Yeah. True Blood oh, was a good man. opening. That's true. True, true Blood was good. True Blood has yeah. a brutal, like the part where the opening. little fox like decomposes. Uh-huh. Every time I would look away. That's kind <laughs> of a new so thing because a lot of shows right now, or especially like comedies, like jump right into them where it's a little like like Lost, just like <gasps> Lost. Like it wasn't yeah. a big opening. Yeah, it was since, just like the little like. Right, but since like Game of Thrones, it's like you have to make a good opening now. You yeah. Have to have yeah. yeah. It's true. I know. I met the guy who designed the, who did the opening of Game of Thrones. Oh, it's and gorgeous. I was like, you, yeah. you did a great job. Yeah, pretty good. he was like, thanks. I was like, all right, I'll see myself. He, he won an Emmy for that. He got an Emmy for that. Yeah, mm-hmm. as a, deservedly so. And yeah. I think, uh, do you want to do a quick one more? And yeah, then let's we'll do one more. Then we'll go to the pick of the day. Um, this is kind of a, okay, so this is from our friend <clears throat> at PSMeadow58. 
and this can go a lot of ways, but what is the most satisfying TV death? Ooh. I know that opens it up to like, we could go Spoiler on. warning, put Ooh, that spoiler dang. warning up. <laughs> Spoilers! Well, Thank you. so Thank you. obviously <clears throat> it's very fresh in my memory, uh, but I found Lady Elena's death to be real satisfying oh, on Game of Thrones. With, yeah. uh, and additionally, obviously, Joffrey, because he was a little piece of shit and he needed to die, yeah. so thank right. goodness. And he died in a horrible, ugly, embarrassing, yeah, painful, exactly, it was great. Exactly, but then when, but Lady Olena having that one-on-one -on -one with Jamie, oh. having already consumed the yeah. wine, which she knows mm -hmm. is poisoned, and going, tell Cersei I did it. I really want her to know. I no. didn't know that's how the point. Oh, it was so good. I was know. So good. I know. I feel like we maybe we overdo Game of Thrones, but it's so fresh in all yeah. of our minds. Yeah. But I was gonna say from last season when Cersei just like blasted the hell out of all of the like brothers of the whatever because I hated them mm -hmm. and I'm so like averse to authority as <laughs> it is, and they were so like, mm, and I was like, yeah. And then she drinks the wine, and then I realize that I'm a mm -hmm. horrible person because I was like, I'm so happy they all died <laughs> except for Marjorie. I was sad about that. Um, satisfying. I, I thought Breaking Bad did a good job with Walter White's character. Mm -hmm. they handled yeah, that well. I thought about that one a little I mean, bit too. Because he couldn't have lived. I mean, there was no way. No, there was could. no way. There's no way. So that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, so shall we? We're gonna go into the. Let's do one, two, three. People today. <laughs> all right. Good team effort there. We're all right. So my question to you is: With all of this talk of a Joker origin story on the big screen. Who would make your cut to play the crazed clown on the small screen? I know they're, they're going to make a movie. They got Martin Scorsese and all this, blah, 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 blah. But let's talk about the small screen. Mm -hmm. Now, we've had uh, variations of this. We've had Mark Hamill for years on the voice of Joker in the animated series. There was a character um, on Gotham who played an early version of the Joker. But let's talk about a new character. Let's, let's get somebody else in there. Well, my answer, of course, is the only answer is animated series. Mark Hamill, forever, for life. You don't need any more small screen jokers. Right. But you know who <laughs> I think? If you're, if you're the, uh, I love like the crew. hand choreo. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> forever, for life, Mark Hamill. Uh, but I think... You know who I, I think actually would be quite a good uh, joker is our, our good friend uh, A1 Steak Sauce Rayon. A1 Steak Sauce yeah, Rayon. Yeah. Ramsey Bolton Ramsey himself Bolton. from yeah. Inhumans. <laughs> oh, damn. Wow. That's sad. A1 Rayon. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, mine, I was thinking, and I know that this is maybe something he would be more for the big screen, but so many of these big, 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 heavy, heavy stars are coming to TV because mm -hmm. that's where it's at. Yeah. Um, I really feel like I would love to see Jake Gyllenhaal do this Ooh. because he is. Oh, yeah, especially if you think of like, like Nightcrawler. He plays he can, crazy. Yeah, that's what well, I mean. Because he can yeah. come in and be like October oh, yeah. Sky Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah. and then he can be like Nightcrawler. And I think he's just that's good so pick. I like underrated that. that's and a good so pick. talented. Mm -hmm. And I want him to be on TV because I want to watch him every week. You know, I think it would be a great pick because you won't see him coming, Peter Dinklage. Oh, He's a little shit. guy. No, he's a little guy. So, like, you don't see him coming. I love so, that. Like, all, like, the mob Literally bosses, they would, they, would, yeah, they would, like, <laughs> underestimate him. And, like, they would, I, Peter Dinklage, I think, would be great. He'd be vicious. I kind of love that. I don't know if he'd have, well, I guess he could capture the crazy humor, but he would be dark, though. Yeah. Oh, he's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he can do anything. He's hugely mm -hmm. talented. Oh, man, you guys, yeah. this is great. Pick of the that day. That baked my noodle. Oh, pick of the day. I will say, too, uh, I think another good pick uh, based on his performance in Sleepy Hollow would be uh, John Cho. Oh. He was good on Sleepy Hollow. As a bad guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was trying to think who it was. Yeah, yeah. That's yep. a good one, too. Sorry. Yeah. I just I mean, I think we, yeah. We're all going to get into casting immediately because these are all amazing choices. David, well, that is, shall we wrap up? That's all we have. Yeah, that's all we have for today, folks. Thanks for joining us in this Sans Josh McCuga episode. You know what? Tomorrow, he's not going to be here, too. So, man, we have more robots, more animation. Sneed DeFries will be here giving her Game of Thrones breakdown, which is always fun to watch. Um, Emma, where can the good people find you? You can find me all over the internet, wherever Emma Fife's are sold, at my name, Emma Fife, E-M-M-A-F-Y-F-F-E. Grace Hancock. Um, and I'm Grace Hancock, and I want to say thanks to my mom who just texted me, great shirt today. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Mom. You got this for me. Um, you can find me online everywhere at Mrs. Grace Face. I don't think my mom watches this live. I think she struggles with the live links. That's okay. Love you, Mom. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I'll see you in a couple months here. Uh, I'm David Griffin. You can find me on social media at GriffinDE. Thanks for checking out Clarity TV Talk. We are here daily, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So be here tomorrow. Well, like I said, with Sinead, Grace, myself, we'll be talking more TV for you. And folks, you know, it's hard for me to say this because I, I, I mean, <laughs> books are such a beautiful thing, people. I mean, it's, I, I, I mean, Josh McCuga's tagline is great, but I mean, come on. All right, I'll, I'll say it. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. <laughs>
Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.